judge, jury, and executioner. That's kind of the way our our regulatory agencies, kind of, that's, I'm wrong, that is the way our, our regulatory agencies operate. And quite frankly, it's perverse. It's an abomination as far as our American ideals are concerned, yet um, we continue to go along with it. What do I mean by judge, jury, and executioner? Exactly what I said. They, they write the rules. Um, they judge on the rules and they decide your fate. And, and again, Jesus, last time I checked, we should have laws here in this country and we should follow and due process. And I was thinking about it this morning and it, it kind of, it took me back to when I was a kid and uh, Saturday morning cartoons, 1970s. And uh, there was, um, they used to have this thing called Schoolhouse Rock. And one of the uh, one of the Schoolhouse Rock episodes was uh, how a bill becomes a law, and it was kind of this cartoon song and dance thing where it shows how I guess if I remember correctly, it had to do with uh, putting up a, a traffic light somewhere, and it was some minuscule type of thing. But again, they were using it as an example. And um, I'm just a bill. Everybody knows a tune if you're from the '70s. I'm just a bill, just an ordinary bill, sitting here on Capitol Hill. And basically takes you through the process and how a bill becomes a law. Well, well, it, wouldn't that be nice? Isn't that cute? Isn't that quaint? Um, we don't do that anymore. We have, um, well, Congress has decided, and they have. This is, and, and again, this is not donkey elephant. This is what it is. They've decided to outsource the legislative process. Um, I, they, they much rather have hearings. They'd much rather have investigations. So they, they have basically taken the legislative process and they have outsourced it to the executive branch of government, uh, which is handled by bureaucrats at these acronym agencies. Again, stop me if I'm wrong here. Stop me if I'm wrong. The regulatory agencies, they, they write, again, they're writing the rules. This is not go through the I'm just a bill process. No. No. So we have a, a country that is ends up being run by ideologues, depending upon whoever wins uh, the presidency at, at that point in time. Or again, you know, a lot of these ideologues are entrenched and they can't be fired in the first place. Here's an example of this. Um, the FTC, the Federal Trade Commission, overruled, overruled its own, its own in-house judge and, and ordered the, uh, the gene sequencing giant aluminum to div uh, divest cancer blood startup Grail. Um, again, this, you know, heads, the FTC wins, tails, the businesses lose. A am I wrong here? Um, back in September, an FTC judge uh, issued a 203 page opinion rejecting the agency's complaint that alleged the grail acquisition would harm potential competitors in the embryonic market for multi-cancer early detection tests. Uh, grail currently doesn't have any competitors and the FTC is saying, well, once they get started, um, there's no comp uh, co competition will come into that market, which we all know is patently fricking absurd. We all know that that's just absolutely ridiculous. If there's money to be made and there's a market, people will come in and look to compete. Competition breeds excellence. Basically, this is about early, early screening uh, tests that they can do. Grail claims that its test can detect 12 of the most deadly cancers with 76% accuracy and has a false positive rate of less than one percent. 
And right now, um, they said they take this test about $949. That's out of pocket. So, um, again, judge rules on this. Judge rules on this where he says the Clayton Act protects competition, not competitors. The antitrust theory and speculation cannot trump facts. He concluded that the FTC had failed to prove its case that Illumina had the ability and incentive to help grail to the disadvantage of alleged rivals. Again, there's no rivals as of yet. And not to mention the fact uh, grail was originally started by Illumina and they spun it off. And I obviously looked to reacquire it after they found some synergy in regards to what they do. Um, again, you know, the FTC overruled this. What's going to happen is this will go to appeal. This might work its way all the way up to the Supreme Court. But again, this goes back to the fact that, that Lena Khan, who's in charge of the FTC, is, um, well, how shall I put this? I'm going to try to be delicate, right? Again, I'm trying to remember it's Holy Week. Um, she doesn't know what she's doing. She, she, she doesn't know. Um, and it's a Dunning-Kruger effect. They, they, they think that they know what they're doing, but they don't. Um, Lena Khan's never worked in the real world. She doesn't understand how business works. She, she went to college. She went to law school. She wrote a paper uh, going after Amazon, and now she's got a job where she's head of the FTC. Head of the FTC. And again, she's a, she's a socialist. She's a socialist through and through. And every single time these agencies get taken over by these ideologues, these people that, quite frankly, have never built anything or accomplished anything in their entire lives, never had to employ anybody in their entire lives, never had to come up with a marketing plan. Um, this, is what, this is what you end up with, people. And again, it goes back to the old elections have consequences. You know, Biden was, you know, he's chosen by the, the Democratic Party. Here's a guy for the most part of his career, went a far left guy. Um, but but his his handlers and the people running him now and the people that have he has put into positions of power, he didn't choose them. His handlers did put this one here and this one there, uh, you know, all the same ideological spectrum. Again, how, how does this damage, how does this merger damage you and I? Does it? Actually, it be benefits us. Benefits us in regards to getting this uh, pre-screening cancer test out. But there's some, I guess, some magical competitor down the road that it, that it is going to damage. And, and again, I'm not buying that. Are you kidding me? I, we live in a world, people, and again, I've written a column about this. Blue chips die. Somebody else will come in. I mean, that, that's the great thing about capitalism. And you talk about creative destruction and disruptors, you know, real disruptors coming into an industry and changing it or making it better and dominating it in some way, shape, matter, or form. I mean, just think about the things just over the past couple of decades. Past couple of decades that that have occurred, the changes. I mean, for crying out loud, you know, let's be honest, Apple was almost out of business. It was almost done. It was almost out of business. It managed to pull itself up and change and, and look at what it's become today. I mean, it, IBM was the, uh, you know, again, mainframe computer. We don't want to get involved in personal computers. And they got involved in personal computers. And then they proceeded to get their ass kicked and ended up selling off their computer division to China. And now they're involved in, in services. This is what happens, people. And, you know, these, these you know, I have no problem with, with monopolies and breaking up monopolies where that no competition can come into an industry. But uh, again, I mean, the, the closest thing we have to that is in banking nowadays, but even then you, you have upstarts that come in. They're going to be able to take out the big guys. No, 
No, but again, you know, we've discussed regulatory capture here on the program. Where, where government gets in bed with, with certain companies. We, ch- we talk about the CHIPS Act. All these chip, co- oh yeah, we need this money from the government. We got to be competitive. Taiwan, all sorts of stuff. And uh, government's like, okay, here you go. And, but now, you know, you take this money, you have to follow all of these woke policies or you have to put your factory in, you know, o- outside of Syracuse, New York. You know about that factory that we, we, they talked about? They made that major announcement. Oh, you, you don't know what's going on behind the scenes. Like they, they're not going to, they can't find the workers up there. They can't find the qualified workers up there to work at this plant. You've got to be kidding me. And we knew this from the get-go. The reason why it was put there was because Chuck Schumer is, uh, well, again, he, he's running the show in the Senate. He's got that type of power. But anyway. Back back to what we're discussing in regards to this uh, FTC judge, jury, and executioner. Uh, that that's the real swamp. That's the real swamp. All of these acronym agencies that completely need to be dismantled from top to bottom. One big restart. Watchdog on WallStreet.com.